Secretary Tillerson, so do I. We have a very good relationship. We disagree on a couple of things. Sometimes I'd like him to be a little bit tougher. But other than that, we have a very good relationship. Sometimes you'd like him to be a little tougher. Sometimes he'd like you to be a little less crazy. With us now, we've got former NATO Supreme Allied Commander and the Dean of the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy at Tufts University, retired four-star Navy Admiral James Travitas. He is, he is a Chief International Security and Diplomacy Analyst for NBC News and MSNBC, and nothing I say during his introductions are reflections of his own personal views or opinions. <laughs> Let's go now with the first question to David Ignatius in Washington. David. I want to ask a Admiral Stavridis, the thing I think we're all wondering, when the President of the United States, the Commander-in-Chief, makes uh, uh, comments like these, uh, we're calling them saber-rattling, but talks about the calm before the storm, what do his combatant commanders, the people uh, like you when you served as NATO commander, what do, you, what do you think, what do you say, what do you tell your allies uh, when you go back to your commands? You know, I, I looked at the photograph of all of those military four-star officers, uh, as David says, the combatant commanders, who were at a dinner in the White House. I attended seven of those dinners over the years as a combatant commander, both with President Bush and with President Obama. And I can't imagine a moment where either of those presidents or any president would make a kind of a leering comment like, this is the calm before the storm and sort of make those military officers a prop in his own little theater and and then to follow it up with this whole idea of oh you'll see what's going to happen this is absolutely not the way to conduct diplomacy and it's no way to run the presidency of the united states and it demeaned those officers putting them in that position and, and, Admiral, if I could ask you a, one quick follow-up, just want to ask what kinds of checks there are built into our system, so that uh, the American people can be comfortable, if, if that's if that's the right word, that there won't be accidents or miscalculations driven by these uh, seeming off-the-cuff comments from the president. Well, good news and bad news. The good news is we've got a coterie of fairly sensible people in the immediate environment of the president, and that would be General Mattis and General <laughs> Kelly and General McMaster. That's the good news. The bad news is our command and control system is built for speed. It is built to deliver lethal effect very rapidly. So I would be hoping that General Kelly in particular, but also General Mattis, are being very close to the president these days so we don't end up in a situation where we stumble into an exchange of ordinance, which can escalate very quickly into a full-blown war, for example, on the Korean Peninsula. Admiral, it's Sam Stein here. Um, it appears, per reports, that uh, the Trump administration is going to declare that Iran has broken the nuclear agreement with the hopes that Congress doesn't reimpose sanctions, a bit of a middle ground, threading of the needle, so you will. Is there any actual diplomatic geopolitical upside to doing something like that when our own military personnel say Iran has, in fact, lived up to the accord that was struck? Sam, I don't see any upside to that course of action. And uh, what we ought to be focusing on is uh, keeping the deal that we have in place. Look, we had a big debate about good deal, bad deal. It's a done deal. We ought to keep it in place because if we walk away from it, the Europeans will walk away from us. So what we ought to do instead, Sam, is think about how we can uh, meet the challenge of Iran, which is pushing hard in a variety of venues, including ballistic missiles, uh, enforcing terrorism, trying to take over other nations like Yemen and Syria. So we've got work to do against Iran, but this kind of do -si do with the diplomacy and the Congress is not going to have much effect at all on Iran. President Trump just tweeted moments ago, and I'm almost scared to read it. It says this, our country has been unsuccessfully dealing with North Korea for 25 years, giving billions of dollars and getting nothing. Policy didn't work. Caddy Kay, I'll send it to you. Yeah, so Admiral, when you read that tweet there from the president on North Korea and his tweets over the weekend saying that only one possible thing will work, um, are you aware of moves within the Pentagon, changes in uh, war planning that might make you think that 
this is more than just tone and bluster. This is actually we are inching towards, as the North Koreans seem to think, we are inching towards some kind of military conflict with North Korea. Caddy, I don't see uh, military operations beginning to unfold in a way that would lead me to believe we're setting the table for an actual full-blown military strike. The thing to watch are the aircraft carriers. Now, you'll read reports that an aircraft carrier deployed this morning, and it did, USS Roosevelt, nicknamed the Big Stick. Mm. But Roosevelt deployed today on schedule, long plan, a year plan. When you see two or three carriers moving toward the Korean Peninsula, that is setting the table. That's getting ready for the strike. So no, I'm not seeing that. But these kind of tweets do more than inch us. We are starting to really sleepwalk toward a conflict on the Korean Peninsula. A million people are going to die, and we can mm. still avoid that if we can hold ourselves back from this kind of impetuous behavior. All right, Admiral James Stravitas, thank you very much. And Sam Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.